Last time on Castlevania Legends, we got unceremoniously dropped to the caverns beneath the castle, so here we are now. So, this is actually the final level of the game. However, uh, I'm not going to be ending this video in this level. Uh, we're actually going to be taking a bit of a detour. For the time being, though, uh, first thing to note about this stage is stalagmites and stalactites do hurt. They're not just background objects. Yes, that is absolutely forcing me to make that weird, awkward jump up the staircase. Because if you jump from the top step, you will shove your whole dang head into a spike. And it's not a one-hit kill, but it will hurt. Other stuff of note is, last episode, we got the Saint Magic. Now, Saint Magic can seem a little redundant. It's basically another projectile that I think does the same amount of damage as the fireball from the third stage of Sonya's Whip. Which, again, seems a little bit redundant, but hey, it's an extra projectile, so it's not that bad. And B, it's one of the most efficient magics in the game. Most of the magic in this game costs a baseline of five hearts. This one only costs one heart, so it's pretty useful if you're running low on hearts or don't want to run low on hearts. And in addition, it can be it can also be used against bosses, so in the stage itself it might be a little useless in comparison to some of the uh, screen wiping stuff, but it, hey, we've got two more bosses to fight, so if you want to use it against them, go crazy. Uh, other than that, though, uh, I like the stage theme in general. The caverns are pretty cool, and the uh, song playing here is also pretty good. Uh, it's a very vampire final stage feeling song, you know? It, it's just got that good feeling to it. Like, Dracula's just in the back of the castle playing it. It's just all, <laughs> I'm playing this organ to be menacing. I'm sure Sonya Belmont will be very impressed when she hears it. I mean, granted, she's in the caverns now, so, like, the acoustics are going to be terrible. However, when she enters the castle proper, oh, she'll be so impressed. And I know she'll actually enter my castle because my minions are useless. Uh, yeah, it's, bas it's got that sort of energy. It's, it's that vibe condensed into song form. And it's, it's pretty good. Not my favorite song, but a very good fitting song for this final area. Of course, my love will al always be for Stage 4's theme. <laughs> Though, to be fair, this game's rendition of Bloody Tears and one more remix are <laughs> also pretty good. Anyway, here's Wolfman. He's my favorite boss in the game. Because look at him jumping. I love his animation. Spring break! Yeah! Woo! I'm Wolfman! Hell yeah! Oh, God, oh fuck, I'm dead! Uh, anyway, that's one of those bosses that's actually pretty difficult because he's just constantly moving. And you always have to be on the move as well, but you don't have a lot of space to move and hit him at the same time, making him actually pretty tricky. But I, god, I adore his animation so much. It's so goofy, I love it. Uh, anyway, though, uh, after you defeat Wolfman, we move on to this section of the castle proper. We move out of the caverns and into actual, like, built stone. That's really cool, and I love that so much. I love that we have worked our way back into the castle. Man, I love it when stages transition like this. <laughs> oh god, just... <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna say it's the only reason I like Sonic 3, but it is one of the many reasons I like it. I just love when games do that sort of thing. It's always a cool detail when they move from one stage to the next so cleanly. Anyway, hey, you wanna know where the detour is? Hit this white candle! You know how that's always been a bad idea? Well, guess what? It's not here. It takes you to a new stage, even deeper under the castle. So yeah, uh, you have to hit the white candle, and the only time you're not forced into the pit it creates, uh, you have to enter it in order to find the secret stage, which is the dungeon. Very basic color palette, it's just black and white, like many a uh, Game Boy game. Or, you know, green and uh, blue or black or whatever. It's one of many common colors. Anyway, so the Dungeons theme is another pretty good song, much like Stage 4. I don't like it as much as Stage 4, but it's still a good song. 
Really, the one main issue with it is just the fact that, <laughs> if anything, it is kind of too fast of a song for this game that, you know, one of the most frequent criticisms of Castlevania Legends is just how slow it is. <laughs> like, the enemy placement is also dickish, but people don't like the uh, walk speed, which, you know, admittedly is a little slow, but I don't think it's the worst. There is actually a uh, hack that you can play that speeds up Sonya's movement, and I considered playing it, or playing that version rather, for this LP, but I decided against it. I figured, again, the game is based around this, and, you know, I, I don't think it's as big a deal. It's not the most fast-paced game, sure, but I can live with that. So yeah, in the long run, I just decided to uh, stick with this instead. Oh, is this th is this this room? It is. All right, so we walk through this room and then oh no, seizure warning! Oh no, we can't move for some reason and we have to deal with enemies that die in one hit. Oh no, whatever will we do? It's so threatening. And they're gone. <laughs> I don't know why that's there. I guess maybe the threat is like we're forced into, like, a candle room situation. But, like, the candle room from level one was way harder than that one, so... I, d I don't know why they put that there. <laughs> it seems so pointless. It's really easy. Uh, like, even if you had a, had a downgraded whip, it wouldn't be that bad. Uh, so this is where our final pickup is, uh, you might have noticed, uh, we could not get the, p uh, sub-weapon in the actual final level, we have to take this detour to get it. And of course, uh, being the most powerful of all of the sub-weapons, uh, Cross is the one that is last. It is the most powerful sub-weapon, and also the most blasphemous. <laughs> and also, probably heretical. I don't think the church would appreciate it either. Actually, to be fair, who would hate that more, God or the Church? I feel like if God saw Belmont just fucking using the cross like a boomerang, they'd be like, oh dang, nice. Hell yeah! <laughs> fucking fuck him up with that cross, my dude. Good job, Belmont, you did it. <laughs> you fucking cross boomeranged a vampire to death, nice one. Uh, maybe that's the real reason that Leon was excommunicated from the church. Because <laughs> he was the first one to weaponize the cross, and, you know, uh, you know, skipping the Crusades, like, oh, okay, look, Leon, uh, you weren't around for the Crusades because you were hunting vampires, and that sucks, but you know what? You built up the hours for it, so even though we don't like you taking all that time off, whatever, you had it built up, we can't make a case against you. However, it's terrible that you're using the cross in battle. We do not appreciate it. It's bad. And then God's just in the background like, No, it fucking rules! Run as hell! Keep going, Belmont! Hell yeah! Alright, so we have the end of the stage right here. Hit the candle, collect the orb, and oh no, it's the Executioner! Hey, guess what? He's also an aggressive boss, much like Alucard, meaning he will always be in our face, so you can burning mode immediately. And yeah, he's just gonna swing at you. He would be pretty hard if you couldn't just turn invincible for this, because he takes up so much space and attacks constantly.